Thank you, Dean Bloomberg, for this incredible honor. It's humbling, and I'm truly, truly grateful. Thanks also to Ken Powell and the other regents, faculty, staff, and students for inviting me to join you for this special occasion. I am so happy to be here. This is an honor I share with my amazing husband, Bill. You are my rock. My mom and dad who believed in me even before I believed in myself. I love you. And the rest of my family and network of colleagues and friends. In turn, I want to congratulate today's graduates on your outstanding accomplishments. You did it! I also like to acknowledge the Humphrey School for being ranked among the country's top 10 public affairs programs. That's right. This ranking is a testament to the professors, staff, and students who carry on the legacy of Hubert Humphrey and his commitment to social justice and human diversity. I stand before you as a kid who grew up in rural Indiana, who attended Head Start, which is a preschool program for low-income kids. Little Laisha would have never imagined joining this prestigious community or all the opportunities I've had in my lifetime, for that matter. As the old saying goes, where you start out in life doesn't dictate where you end. I didn't get to this moment alone. As my grandma would say, there are a few things in life you do well by yourself. We all stand on the shoulders of giants, family, friends, mentors, teachers, all the people who supported us in our dreams. We owe it to them, ourselves, and future generations to pay it forward, to do more, more to advance the common good, more than what is comfortable, and more than we even believe is within us. Looking back over the years you've been in this program, you've crushed it and accomplished so much. Group projects, countless presentations, and I've heard about the special bonding that occurs for those of you who had to take regression. Mm, mm, mm. You've been working hard for this day to come, and many of you are asking, what now? What impact will I have on people's lives? How will I change the world? Who's going to pay off my student loans? I see some of your parents out there shaking their heads saying, not me. But for right now, I want you to be present, fully present in this moment. Soak this up. This is a celebration of you, and we need you. We need every single one of you. There is a loss of trust in our institutions, a division in our conversations. These are tough and uncomfortable times, and we feel it everywhere from the halls of Congress to the dinner table. But we have reason for optimism and hope. There are heroes among us who refuse to give in to cynicism. Leaders who believe they can change the world. Leaders who are authentic and purposeful. Leaders like you. A few months ago, I had an opportunity to meet with some members of your class, including today's incredible student speaker, Rachel Dane. I heard their stories, their hopes and fears. They didn't hold back. And I walked away with confidence in our future. As you take this next step on your life's journey, remember, you are not alone. Continue to nurture the relationships you've developed from your Humphrey experience, as Rachel mentioned. Relationships with your classmates, teachers, and other members of this remarkable community. Keep building real human connections especially in this increasingly digital world. I like to say there's the family you're born into and the family you make. Stay engaged as alumni and listen for those aha moments from mentors and others who provide inspiration and guidance. It warms my heart to have a few of my sources of black girl magic here today. Trailblazing African-American women who've dedicated their lives to doing the hard and noble work. 
Dr. Retha Clark King, Wenda Weeks Moore, and Dr. Josie Johnson, some of the baddest sisters on the planet. Thank you. Thank you for all that you've done, including opening doors and breaking glass ceilings for me and so many others. Another mentor was Mrs. Coretta Scott King, the late wife of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and a champion of civil and human rights. I met Mrs. King back in 2001 as part of a project I was working on at Target. While she taught me many lessons, one of the most foundational was to live a purpose-driven life. A purpose or calling serves as your GPS. It guides your life and the decisions you make. With purpose, you find meaning and have impact. With purpose, you call upon courage in the most challenging of times. With purpose, you discover joy. You've chosen paths that position you to tackle some of our biggest challenges, from civil and human rights, to climate change, to intergenerational poverty, the myriad issues that help define purpose, issues that demand our best thinking, immediate action, sustained commitment, and bravery. We can't be stopped by fear. Fear the issues we're tackling are too big, too risky, too difficult to measure. Leadership isn't the absence of fear. It's the ability to move through it. You will create pathways to opportunities that will literally change the trajectory of people's lives for generations to come. Living a life of purpose starts one step at a time. And one of the first steps is being your authentic self unapologetically you, yet open to the stories and experiences of others. That's about building empathy. Now, don't just surround yourself with people who look like you, act like you, think like you, or talk like you. Different points of view and experiences can open the door to co-creating breakthrough ideas. Working together to find common ground and common sense solutions is possible. It's not always easy, especially these days, when we often feel more divided than united. In order for us to move forward together and make progress, we sometimes have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Let me say that again. We sometimes have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. I remember a time very early in my career when I was working with a group of cross-sector leaders. We started talking about preschool programs as a pathway to developing life and career skills. A member of our group threw shade at Head Start by saying, those people in that program are never going to be ready for the future workforce. Characterizing the people and the program as deficit-based as opposed to asset-based. The comments were dismissive totally disconnected from the dignity, the humanity, and the potential of the individuals and community. In that moment, I saw the faces of the kids, the families, and the teachers in my Head Start program who were taking steps towards a better life. I felt a responsibility to represent their voices. The room was loud and noisy, but I had a seat at the table and so I said, I went to Head Start. Silence. But it turned out OK, because then the real conversation began. Many of you have had similar situations where you've been uncomfortable and had to work through the issue and the range of emotions you felt. And you had to decide if you were willing to speak up, even if it had negative consequences. We have to find the fortitude to lead, to ask probing questions, to say what needs to be said, and truly listen in order to facilitate courageous conversations. It's a skill set we have to work on, 
a muscle we have to build. My question for you is, how uncomfortable are you willing to get in service of your purpose? Your unique purpose matters. Your leadership matters. Your voice matters. Before I go, I want to share one more story. Many years ago, my boss was scheduled to speak at our company's big annual meeting, but couldn't because of a personal emergency. I was tapped to fill in. Now, this is a big event. Over 10,000 leaders coming together to hear our strategy for the year ahead. Uh, I was one of a dozen or so speakers. All were seasoned executives, except for me, of course. And I had done almost no public speaking, and this was way outside of my comfort zone. It wasn't just nerves. As the first African-American woman to speak in that forum, I felt a heavy sense of obligation to the company, our employees, and all people of color. I wanted to effectively represent our shared story and to use that moment to open doors of opportunity for others. I needed a lifeline, uh, and thankfully I had one. Mrs. King was backstage with me. I could have put on a brave face and Lord knows I wanted to, but I managed to summon the nerve to tell her I was afraid. I had to be vulnerable, something I'm not very good at. This extraordinary woman laid her hand on my arm, looked me in the eye and said, you have earned the right to be here. Do what you have to do. Do what you've been called upon to do. Humphrey School of Public Affairs, class of 2019, you got this. You are ready to go out and do what you have to do what you've been called upon to do. As you walk across this stage, remember, each of you has earned the right to be here. You are worthy. You are amazing. Step across this stage with confidence and courage. Step into hope, optimism, and opportunity. Step passionately into your purpose and into a world that needs you. This is your moment. This is your time. Congratulations, graduates.